These are six good old tips that I wish I had known before. Let's get started. The first one is learning to use container nodes. Probably you have seen in a lot of tutorials uh, for both beginners and intermediates that sometimes when they want to create some kind of UI, if it is super simple, they don't tend to use containers. So for example, if they wanted to add some buttons, okay, for example, I would create here a play button, okay, maybe something like this, and then a menu button, what they would do is that they would, for example, center both Okay, and then from here, they will grab one button, move it up a little bit, and there you have the buttons. And indeed, this would technically just work for a pretty simple prototype, but this is not something expandable, because let's say that then you also want to add another button, I don't know, a credits button. So I would have to move this down over here, and now they would not be centered, okay? So I would have to go once again and move all of this a little bit up. And there are, we have this. So indeed, it is not something quite expandable. Not only that, but also the separation that you have between the two is not the same one, of course. So that's the reason why, since the beginning, you should be able to learn how to use control container nodes. I will copy these nodes, paste them over here, and I will reparent them to a new node. In this case, to a horizontal uh, container. Hbox container, okay? So, for example, this is going to align them horizontally and I can modify the separation, I don't know, 100 and then center this. So there I will have them or I could even align them vertically with a V-box container. Okay, and I can make this container a little bit smaller. I can, for example, make it like this. Let me center it. And there we have it with perfect separation and I can add as many buttons as I want and everything will look perfect. You have a lot of container nodes that you are able to use. So make sure that you start learning at least a couple of them. Probably the main ones are Hbox and Vbox and also maybe some that you may use is Grid Container and Margin Container. You should also probably know by now that the best way of handling node references is with an on ready variable. So for example, if I wanted to make this a sprite red, what I would do is that firstly I would I would grab a reference uh, in with the on ready annotation to this sprite to this. So I will make a variable, call it sprite. I will use static typing sprite 2D and I will make this equal to sprite 2D. And then in the ready function I would do sprite.modulate equals color.red, for example. And this would technically work and, and would be okay. But uh, the thing is that if then I want to reference the collision shape, for example, I will have to type all this again. And of course, it is quite tiring when you need a lot of references. So you can just drag this reference into the code and you will get this. Okay, you will get the node path, but you can go a, a step further and now I'm dragging it over here and at the same time, right now I am pressing down control. So there I have automatically created a reference collision shape 2D. So for example, now I can grab it collision shape 2D and I can, for example, disable this collision shape if I wanted to. And for example, this 2D, you can delete it over here if you want so that you only have a collision shape. So indeed, whenever you want to reference a node, you can uh, drag drag it to the script, hold down control, and then drop it. And this will quickly create a reference to it. In the Godot documentation, there is an amazing section that a lot of people do not take into account when they are starting, and this is the getting started section. So here you get a, a, a super brief introduction to Godot, programming, JDScript, etc. And then uh, you get to, uh, to have two complete written version tutorials on creating your first 2D game. You learn how to create this 2D game and also then this uh, another 3D game. These are super well written because they are like official tutorials from the Godot uh, engine. So yes, definitely if you are a Godot developer that is just starting out, you should really consider them. And also now that we are talking about the Godot documentation, you should uh, use static typing as a general basis. If you don't know what static typing is, 
uh, is basically a way of writing code in which you define the variable types, constant types, uh, function uh, parameter types, and also return types. So this has a lot of advantages. Uh, the code allows you to to spot errors before running the game. It makes your code more readable. So since you are a beginner, uh, you should be learning how to write good clean code and static typing um, is probably a condition for that. I have previously analyzed static typing in a video a couple of weeks ago, so you can go and check it out because this is 13 minutes of specifically talking about static typing, if you should use it, how, etc. Now that we are also talking about learning, you should really consider buying uh, some paid courses. They really give you like a lot of advantages because uh, usually they are better structured, they have better explanations, uh, you have a lot of content there uh, to, to actually consume, even though of course there are a lot of amazing uh, free tutorials out there on YouTube, uh, I would always consider these paid courses. They really uh, allow you to create things super quickly, much more quickly than having to jump from one tutorial to another, so I would really consider them, and they are also quite affordable. So you should really consider them. And for this, I have three platforms that uh, you can use. The first one is Zemba. You can go to Courses, Create Games, go to and you will see all the catalog that they have. Uh, the catalog that they have over here is huge. Take a look at the number of hours that each of these courses have. Um, so indeed, this is something that you should consider. Then the uh, another platform that is quite interesting is Game Dev TV. You can go to Products, go to View All Go to Courses, and well, here you will see all the Godot courses uh, that they have. I have even bought uh, three of them. So once again here, they have like fewer courses, but uh, they are more comprehensive. They have more hours, um, but well, they still explain a lot of things uh, and create amazing projects. So well, these are two platforms that you can use. And the third one is basically Udemy. Here, once again, you, you can find some uh, courses that are the same one as Game Dev TV. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, this course is $60, for example, and this course over here would be something like $10, $12, $13. So, well, if you want to buy a Game Dev TV course, definitely buy it through their official platform. But, well, you can also find other courses. Udemy usually, like, puts a lot of discounts. In a lot of cases, you don't have to pay $60. Most cases, you have to pay something like $9, $12, $15, but th they are always discounting courses, so you would never... I think need to pay full price for this. Um, so well, these are the three platforms that I recommend, but of course they are there are probably much more. And the last tip that I wanted to share with you, I will be leaving a link to this article in the description down below. It's basically to use twins. Uh, because twins will allow you to animate nodes quite easily um, in code, okay? Um, so for example, let me provide here this guide over here, this example project, in which they have a cube here and they have different buttons with which they are, let's say, twinning uh, the the, um, the cube. They are changing the, uh, moving it and scaling it, changing it to red, uh, making it transparent, blue, green, etc. Um, so here, the, in, actually in this guide, you have a lot of information about twins. So um, for example, here you have the, the example project that they have. Uh, so it is amazing how easy it is to animate things. Um, you can also use the animation player and you would be having something quite similar, but well, it is uh, also another way of animating things. Uh, and I would really recommend you to learn it as well. Uh, remember, this link is going to be in the description down below. If you find found any of these tips useful, please remember to subscribe to the channel. Bye bye.